Hey peeps, welcome back to another video. Bit of a progress update this one. Show you some of the stuff I've been up to. It's been a pretty busy few weeks if I'm honest. So uh, those keen eye viewers will have noticed uh, in a few videos I had a E30 in the workshop. That's now gone. Uh, back to my good friend Ricky. We built his engine for him, so that's done. Uh, car's gonna come back at some point for a load of welding and fabrication, but that needs to uh, take a back burner at the moment. So I'll show you some other bits and pieces that we've been up to. Next up, another good friend of mine, uh, Jack. We have his E36 coupe in, a uh, pretty spicy little car. Uh, factory 323 manual with the black interior. Nice. Um, a few hot boy bits, got cams in it. Cams, M50 manifold, stuff like that. My face is really dirty. Yeah, well. Um, yeah, a few hot boy bits. So pretty cool car. Got some nice bits and pieces. Black on black coupe, which is always a winner. Uh, anyway, this one's in for... Uh, we're going to rip the the rear end out of it. Um, it's got a lot of knocking and noise on the rear end. So we're going to rip all that out. Get some new bushes, bearings in it. Uh, powder coat and paint a few bits and pieces. Um, the car is, is pretty tidy up together. But yeah, we've just got some suspension stuff to address. So... That's the next couple of weeks worth of work. Drop the rear end out of it and get stuck into it. The coupe, which is I, I know what you YouTube fans want. You want progress on this coupe, and I'm trying my hardest. I've noticed my last five or six videos uh, haven't been quite as popular. It seems there's still the loyal fans commenting and liking, so thank you. But a, the numbers are much worse on the last five or six videos, and a few of them weren't on the coupe. So I'll get it, you wanna see silver coupe magic. Um, but a couple of videos were on the coupe, but they were on the, like, the subframe and the underside, um, which I don't know, didn't do as well as I'd maybe hoped. But anyway, I'll give you a quick update. So this is how she currently sits. So the both the trailer arm pockets, that one's welded in. Uh, that one's welded in. Subframe reinforcements are in, so that's a big chunk of uh, weld on the underside done. I've still got quite a bit to do. I've got to sort out, I'm going to run two new rear brake lines. It's a shame because these brake lines are, have been redone out of copper. They're actually quite nice, but the unions up here, all of this is disgusting. There's no way I'm leaving that on the car, so unfortunately that needs doing. So yeah, that's on the to-do list. Um, a lot of wire wheeling because there's a lot of surface rust under here lingering um, you've probably seen this in previous videos but yeah there's a good few hours under there wire wheeling, rust treatment prime and then a Gravitex coating so there's a lot to do there um, and then we're going to get back onto this uh, finish this front part because that's still just sat there un unfinished there she is we've got to sort that and obviously you guys have seen my crusty arch. Lots and lots of rot. Uh, kicking around. It's obviously had paint in the past. Lots of filler and hang on, let me sort the light out. Um, yeah, so what I've done for that is a friend of mine, must have been about a year ago now, uh, broke a 36 up and had a good quarter on it. So I cut that off originally. I've now brought that in from home. So we've got a mind the bird shit and paint whatever that is we've got a good clean quarter maybe a little bit filler there but we can figure that out but all of this and the lip is pretty tidy so we've got that as a donor panel uh to weld in so we'll get around to that at some point um i just need to get stuck into this but yeah basically just a little progress update coop is still in hand so don't panic it's all good um still holding bits and pieces for it but yeah that's all done been busy with my touring, uh, fit some upgrades to that, new Z3 rack, new power steering pump, blah, 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 blah. And just generally been super busy with other bits and pieces. Uh, lots of fabricating. Uh, there's an E30 subframe, just welded on a reinforcement kit. Strength all that up, so that's done and lovely. Um, so yeah, it's been, a, it's been a pretty hectic few weeks. Um, and those of you know, I've got a vinyl plotter which i make a lot of stickers and stuff on that died two weeks ago 
So that put me behind a little bit as well. So it's all been go, 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 go. Um, so yeah, lots to, uh, lots to keep up with. Anyway, the crux of this video is I'm trying to figure out what works on YouTube and what doesn't. I think people want to see fabrication videos on the coupe. That's what people seem to like. That's kind of what I, a lot of the content was at the beginning. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out my niche, figure out what you guys want to see. Um, so yeah, just trying to get my head around the whole YouTube thing. Anyway, for today's video, it's just a quick one, nothing too exciting. I did one on the 7 Series a little while ago, um, and I figured I'd do another one. We've got a pretty gnarly oil leak down in there. So we're going to change the oil filter housing gasket in this one. So not really a particularly exciting video, but it needs doing. Um, there's potentially talk, well, there is a trip booked uh, to go to Poland later in the year. A few of us are going. And we've got the choice of two cars. We either take the 7 Series, which is comfy, reliable, not that exciting, or we take my one of my other cars, which isn't on the channel, you haven't seen it, but it's an E39 540 Touring manual. Uh, so pretty cool car, but that car's sat for nearly two years and needs um, not a huge amount, but it needs a few bits and pieces before I can re-MOT it. So if you want to see that, drop a comment below, let me know, and uh, I can document that. The car's pretty cool, pretty rare. Um, it's already got a few trick bits on it, full BC coilovers. Um, air ride conversion and 20 inch wheels and stuff like that but yeah if you're interested in that comment below and i will maybe document some of that anyway let's get into the meat of it and let's get this thing done because it is actually like four o'clock i think i want to go home soon so yeah let's get into this and uh show you how to change oil foot housing what i would say is this is basically the same process for any bmw this era move the crap out of the way and undo about six bolts and clean the oil up not hard, nice easy job, he says. Right, so straight into it, just get as much crap out of the way, get started, so airbox off, and then we need to take the alternator off. Before you take the alternator off, you disconnect the battery, otherwise you're gonna zap yourself and blow fuses. So let's get this airbox out the way. You can see basically to get to the bolts on this thing, the alternator is right sat bang in the middle. So we need to disconnect the battery, pull the alternator bolts out, should be two, one top and bottom, lift that out. We can just chuck that back here, probably take this bracket off, or this, sorry, this air duct. Um, I've spotted we've got a pretty gnarly power steering leak. Shot car on a BMW, I know. But uh, whilst we're in here, we'll use the opportunity to pull that hose off, see if there's any splits in it, cut it further back if needs be, and put a new Jubilee on it. Looks like someone's been in there already because they've replaced the clip, I'm guessing, and left that one further down. So we'll get that little job sorted. Uh, we probably have to pull the viscous off um, so we can get the uh, aux belt off, I imagine. But yeah, let's get into it. Start putting more bits and pieces off. All right, off camera, after taking the battery off, how we're going to take the viscous off. Remember to undo it, righty tighty. Right, Wouldn't it be nice if they always came off that easy? They don't. Oh, ooh, it comes out the bottom. Now what we want to do, there's a little cover. To release the tension on the belt, we need to pop the little cover off this uh, idler pulley. Pop that off. And there's our cover, that just pries off. And once that's off, you can then use a Torx bit, I can't remember the size, uh, to relieve the tension. Well, I think before we go too much further, I'm going to address this. Because one, the bottle's kind of in my way, but two, it's just disgusting. So, let's um, 
pull this reservoir off. Well, one, clean it up, and two, pull it off, have a look at the hose. We've got a couple of 13 mil bolts. I'm gonna whip those off. Number two. Plenty. Shouldn't have two. Oh, we've got plenty of fluid in there. Right, we're gonna be pretty quick. Let's find a container to catch that in. Hmm. Sure we're gonna make a mess, but we'll try and limit the amount of mess we make. Right now that bottle's off, that needs a bloody good clean up. And then uh, yeah, just check these hoses for any splits. In an ideal world, I think I'd probably want to put brand new hoses on it, but it's a daily drive, I'm not that worried. It seeps a little bit of oil over time then so be it. Old clips, they move. So both of these hoses are in good nick. There's no splits in the top, sometimes they split. Um, I think what's happened is it's just deformed over time and the original clamps aren't adding enough pressure. So we'll stick some new Jubilee clips on there and hopefully that sorts that out. But like I said, in an ideal world, probably replace both these hoses, but yeah, daily driver. I'm not that precious over it. So anyway, that's done. Got a bit of oil to clean up, but I've made too much of a mess. Mainly just wanted to stop any crap getting on the alternator really, because obviously that's susceptible to damage if it gets covered in oil and shit. So that's our hoses tucked out of the way we'll revisit that in a moment obviously you don't really need to take these off if you're just changing oil foot housing but because my bottle is so disgusting we're going to clean that up i can do that off camera and show you what it looks like so that's the before uh, just to note there is a seal in this lid um, all of these caps vent this is normal to have a holder but there is a seal in the top of the lid so you can replace that if you want but yeah let's give that a clean up there we go and then that's that cleaned up not perfect, but a lot less gunky and nasty than it was. Then with the mount, clean the worst of the gunk off. Always nice to put cleaner parts back on. Not perfect, but we can make a bit of an effort, can't we? Right, so now we want to pop off this Fox belt. Should be able to just tease. Let's take the rad hose off and just tease our arm into there just to remove the tension from this belt. Right, so now that's done, we need to pull the alternator off, which is the bolt that goes through this tensioner here. And then there's probably gonna be one at the bottom somewhere down there. We don't need to disconnect the wiring. We can just put the alternator here. We've got this lovely little space. And that's our tensioner and top on our bolt off. Obviously the tensioner needs replacing. Do I have one? No, I don't. We can come back to that at a later date. It's not noisy on the car, but I can feel it and it's noisy on the camera, I'm sure. So that needs addressing. And then I'm guessing there's one lower bolt somewhere down there. Let's see if we can tease that off. bottom bolt out so now we should just be able to pry this alternator out of the way there we go and then that's our oil filter housing so we can basically pop that off should just be a whole load of 13 mil bolts Uh, there is obviously going to be quite a bit of oil in this. The best time usually to do this would be when you're doing an oil change, but we're not, and it needs doing, so let's just get on and do it. So we've got a whole load of 13 mil bolts to pull off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and it looks like the power steering 
is mounted to it as well that shouldn't be a problem because we can just basically just leave the whole thing back change the gasket clean it up bolt it back so we'll whip these six bolts out and see what happens but we should be fine Right, wonderful. Bit of a squeeze, but yeah, you get the gist. Uh, you can basically replace the seal without pulling this all, this whole contraption out of the way because the power steering pump is still connected. But yeah, so you can kind of see where it's been leaking oil. I mean, a lot of that is just because I pulled this off and obviously a whole load of oil's come out, but you get the gist, that's where it would have been leaking. Um, the gasket, or gasket I say, it's, a, it's an O-ring, really, wherever I put it, the new one. So that's the new gasket. Pretty simple little thing. So basically what we've got to do is pull this old one out, we'll get a pick in there, and then insert the new one, and then reverse all of what we've undone to get it back up. Obviously we need to get a decent amount of brake cleaner down there once it's bolted back on to uh, get rid of that oil from the block and also at this point it's worth mentioning obviously the engine is currently open so we've got to be super careful don't drop anything in there try not to disturb any dust or dirt nearby because we do not want that falling in um so yeah got to be super careful at this point but yeah let's get the old gasket off so let's grab a pick and we can yank that off tool of choice nice pick so we're just going to grab that Not sure I'm going to be able to do a good job of filming this and getting it off, but I'll try. Right, there we go. So to get this out, have your pick tool. Um, and this channel here, <coughs> internally, is not a part of the gasket here, so you can get your pick in alongside it. And then pull it out. Um, it's basically turned to plastic now, it's no longer an O-ring. So if you look, like, yeah, it's it's not rubbery at all. So it's no wonder it's leaking, but yeah, get the whole thing out. Right, that's the old gasket out. Pretty much broke up in about a million pieces. So yeah, it's nice. I've just wiped the two mating faces, just to get rid of the excess oil. So we put a new gasket in there, uh, lube it up, and then uh, yeah, bolt it back down. Wonderful. That's all done. I've cleaned out the best I can. Again, not too fast, but got the bulk of the oil off. The rest of it's just going to burn off. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. This method applies to basically everything. E36, E46, all the filter housings are virtually the same. It's just the bits you've got to get off first to get to them. But yeah, job done. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Promise you the next video will be on the coupe. And we're going to be doing more seal repairs and proper stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, comment below. Let me know what you think. I want more comments on my videos. Thank you for watching. Peace out, guys.